I now call the February 3rd, 2021 meeting of the Monroe County Board of Zoning Appeals to order. Call the uh, roll, please. Uh, William Hosea. Mary Beth Smarchuk. Here. Robert Clemens. Here. Vicki Sorensen. Here. And Bernie Garitas. Here. Uh, we have four members in the quorum. Introduction of evidence, please. I request that the following items be introduced in evidence for tonight's hearing. Uh, the Monroe County Zoning Ordinance has adopted and amended the Monroe County Comprehensive Plan, has adopted and amended the Monroe County Subdivision Ordinance, has adopted and amended, and the rules of procedure of the Board of Zoning Appeals, as well as the cases advertised and docketed for a hearing on tonight's agenda. I move that we approve the evidence. I second the motion. I'll call the roll and the approval of the uh, evidence. Uh, Mary Beth Gismarcha? Yay. Mark Clements? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Rudy Garitas? Yes. Okay, the uh, evidence is approved by a 4 to 0 vote. I move that we uh, approve the agenda for tonight's meeting. Second. Okay, the motion, the vote is on the approval of agenda for tonight's meeting. Uh, vote in the favor is vote to approve the agenda. Uh, Barbara Clemens? Yes. Vicky Sorensen? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Mary Beth Smith Marchek? Yes. Okay, the agenda for tonight's meeting is approved by a 4 0 vote. I might just have one last item I'd like to move, and that is that we approve the minutes of the November 4th meeting. Are you asking for a motion, Margaret? I just moved. Okay. I just made the motion. <laughs> and I second. <laughs> okay. It's been moved and seconded that the uh, minutes for the November 4th, 2020 Board of Zoning Appeals meeting be approved. A vote in favor is both to approve the minutes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Bernie Garitas? He's Sorry. Second. Yes. Uh, Mary Beth Gismarchuk? Abstain, I wasn't here. Okay. And Barbara Clements? Yes. Uh, the minutes are approved by a three, uh, three vote with one abstention. Okay. First off, we have old business. Uh, that is case number 2008-VAR-61. 2101-VAR-01. 2101-VAR-02. Uh, Tammy? Hi. Um, sorry, Jackie, do I just share screen and I'm good to go? Yep, press the green share screen button. Thank you. That work for everyone? Yes. Okay. Let me make this smaller, sorry. All right, um, so this is the, there's three variances here. Um, the BZA first heard the 2009-VAR-61 meal residential storage structure variance from chapter 802 um, in October and it was continued by the Board of Zoning Appeals for further information. Um, and that was basically to provide staff with a certified site plan, which the petitioner did. And um, we did have um, the structure was in a sinkhole, which now leads to these other two variances that are being requested. 2101-VAR-01, um, a buildable area variance from chapter 804, specifically sinkhole conservancy areas. And then also 2101-VAR-02, the sinkhole conservancy area um, standards variance from chapter 829. Um, this is just to recap, since we last heard this in October, um, this is located off of North Jenner Drive. It's zoned Ag Rural Reserve.
uh, the comprehensive plan has this as a designated community. And then the right hand shows just, it's a little outdated site plan, a um, lot less woods now. There's a 2,400 square foot building on the site and some driveways that have occurred since um, this picture. So uh, again, this petition was previously presented October 7th, 2020 for one variance, and that was for residential storage structure uh, in the Agar R zone. If you do not have a home on the lot, then there is a restriction to only allowing um, a 1,750 square foot structure. And in this case, the petitioner had built um, without a permit. This was kind of last April when things were a little, um, pandemic was just starting to set in and everyone was trying to get used to, to things, but uh, he did build a 2,400 square foot structure and that's what the original variance was for. Um, I just wanted to throw the site plan in here that was submitted uh, by Bynum Fanyo and it shows the driveway, uh, septic field location, and then this is the 2,400 square foot storage structure, residential storage structure that was placed within a platted sinkhole conservancy area, which I highlighted in yellow. This is the kind of the site plan um, kind of highlighted here. So now there are two additional design standard variances required to issue an after the fact permit. Uh, one of those would be the buildable area standard for um, uh, yeah, under chapter 804 for building within a sinkhole. And then the other one is just actual sinkhole conservancy area standards. Uh, these are the site plans that we saw in the last uh, presentation. Uh, the driveway, it actually does not have a driveway permit. You will see staff um, make a recommendation that a driveway permit happen. This is the structure. Here you can see the structure from the south. Um, and the bottom right is a, a septic system location. Staff did note that there was a lot of disturbance of the site and had requested the petitioner stabilize it, which he did immediately. So here's uh, proof that the site had been stabilized. And then again, the upper left is the septic location. And then we have some aerial views that are from April where they're just starting to clear the site. We don't see the structure yet. And again, this is a different view from April 2020 where they're clearing, but not yet having construction started on the site. This is within a platted subdivision, the Pine Woods subdivision, lot number 26. And highlighted um, on the main plat is the sinkhole conservancy area. And this to the right was one of the first attempts at a site plan. They had attempted twice and it just really simply wasn't enough information for staff. So we are appreciative that they submitted the certified plan. Uh, this is the letter that was submitted originally September, 2020. And I did put in some email communication with Chad Olson, the petition, one of the petitioner's representatives. Um, just kind of describing there were other requests from, from the Board of Zoning Appeals to confirm the height of the structure and possibly why a permit was not, issued, like why they did not pursue getting a permit. So this email kind of confirms the, the height of the structure and that it does meet design standards and that they claim that um, they had called the building department eight to 10 times with no answer or return phone calls, which um, it, it was an interesting time uh, back in April and May. Uh, again, uh, I bring the site plan in just to for reference of what we're work, working towards are these three variances here. Um, because there was, you know, this, the structure was built within the sinkhole, uh, we did request and strongly urge the petitioner to have uh, an engineering firm do a karst analysis. And that is something that anytime we see disturbance in a sinkhole or an issue, it's in our chapter 829 as, as something that staff usually has the right to request. They did produce this report from Patriot Engineering and Environmental. Um, and hopefully you had a moment to, to look it over. It was only three pages. 
the stormwater um, department MS4 coordinator did review it as well and also performed a site visit as a result. And so within the packet are the comments from the MS4 coordinator and some of the solutions that they saw while out on the site as to perhaps how this um, could be remedied out here without taking extreme measures. So um, staff is recommending denial on all three design standard variances for chapter 802, chapter 804, and chapter 829 from Monroe County zoning ordinance based on the findings of fact, specifically finding C and subject to the drainage engineer report. And finding C basically, you know, a practical difficulty, it was self-created by not obtaining a permit. And um, staff did want to note that it's on the first page of the report that in the event uh, that a majority of the Board of Zoning Appeals finds that evidence supports amended findings and approval, staff recommends the following four conditions in the form of a written commitment. And this slide is that. And I suppose I could go over those. <laughs> so, the, and um, a lot of these are taken from the drainage and highway engineering comments. So one is to submit a final plot amendment petition to satisfy the MS cord, MS4 coordinator's request to amend the sinkhole conservancy area and add a drainage easement to lot 26 of the Pinewood subdivision as depicted in exhibit six. And I did not, oh, it's this one here. So kind of redefining, not this yellow, but the red and having a drainage easement uh, on the lot. And then two would be to add a note to the plat stating nothing is to be placed in the drainage easement. And, and of course the plat is signed by the owner. Um, so that would also satisfy stormwater MS4 coordinators comments. And sub number three is submit a grading permit application for review prior to any further construction or installing culvert for the driveway um, as referred to in exhibit five. And again, um, where this drainage is, there's a driveway that crosses here. And we just wanna make sure that all the water flowing off the structure would, would continue down towards the ravine this way. And then finally, the highway department, they did have a um, driveway permit on file, but it was for a logging, commercial logging. And so they would like to see an updated residential driveway permit application uh, submitted. So does anyone have any questions for staff? Tammy. Questions for staff? Go ahead, I'm Bernie. sorry, Mary Beth. Tammy, would you go back to the, um, the Patriot report? Yes. I think that would do it. Okay, yeah, that, can you blow up the picture of the building? Because that picture is very informative with what it looks like from the picture in the staff report from the, from the backside. Um, I'm gonna try one thing to make this larger. I don't know if it'll work. Oh, there it is. Hold on, gotta move your head, Bernie. Got stuff to bring in the garage when I get done. Tammy, if you press control and plus, I know, and it's not responding. And it okay. pulls up a little window, but it doesn't want to work. In fact, it's that, numbers that's are okay, showing. Tammy. I, I can pull the report up on my other screen. Okay. Hang, hang on just a second, okay? Sure, sure. If I start speaking with that other report up, you won't be able to hear me. So that's the benefit of me pulling up another, another screen. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why it's not letting me make these larger and smaller. Because it, the technology is in charge of us. <laughs> okay, can you hear me now, Tammy? Yes. Okay, hang on just a second. Can you hear me now? Yes, I still can. Okay, hear. great. So on that building, it looks like that the, it, what's the green arrow? Is that just an artifact on the film? Or the, the turquoise? I to go believe... Left I believe that the engineer is um, making a direct like arrow to that as being the low point. Oh, okay. Possibly a, a, 
the eye of the sinkhole. Okay. Sam, if there... you proceed to the next slide, I tried to blow it up, see if it works. No. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Technology. So just to the right, as I'm looking at the the reports photo, it looks like there's a four to six inch little tree there. Mm -hmm. Is that is that a tree or is that a, just a is that a limb or something just sticking in it? That's it looks like I it's think a it's a tree. Or, that is a tree. Okay. And then as you go back further to the building, there's other trees and growth. Yeah, where that, that building are, where that building said that was all trees. I cleaned all that out with I um that was full of trees. Okay. Right. Thank you, sir. Oh, just real quick point of order. We're going to have the BZA um, talk to staff for a second, and then they'll call on you as the petitioner and ask you any questions. So okay. we'll, we'll get to you in just a second. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And then, and this may be something uh, for the petitioner to answer, but he, like I said, the, 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 the following Jackie's instructions. So it looks like the runoff from the roof on that building comes down with no gutters and then it looks like it it goes back to the back I guess it would be the southeast corner of the building is that correct is that correct um good question I'm going to refer to some of my other photos it looks like there's a rise between the building and say with that little four to six inch tree as I'm looking at right it's too hard to tell from some of my other photos okay okay well this maybe might be better and I, I think I can see that. Okay. All right. That, that's all I've got right now. Thanks. Thanks, Tammy. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for staff? Um, I have a question. Um, I noticed in uh, the documentation, the petitioner plans to uh, eventually build a house. There, are there going to be any issues um, on building the house on this? Um, if the ask to build a house it's just going to need to meet all the design standards and thanks jackie it will need to meet all design standards um, and also additionally apply for a grading permit um, if you uh, if you would happen to approve this with conditions um, and that would then allow for the ms4 coordinator to review the plans and review drainage and the lo location of the any other residential structure Okay, thank you. Any further staff questions for staff? Seeing none, is the petitioner here and would you like to speak? Yes, how you guys doing? Okay, doing okay. Uh, yep. Can you uh, raise your hand, sir? Okay. State your name. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Uh, Chad Olson, yes. Thank you, Chad. You can continue. Oh, uh, well, thanks for. I, I when we bought this property, uh, then last January a year ago, um, I was under when we went to closing. They get you know, I was told they had a driveway permit. I actually got documentation for a driveway permit. I didn't, you know. So I'll get working on that, you know, probably tomorrow and, and do that. And I was already expecting to put a culvert in, in that because that, that whole roadway was already there when we bought the property and it had gravel and stuff already in place. So I just figured the septic permit was already on the, the septic was already installed on that property um, and the driveway was already put in. So um, that was, you know, what I was thinking. I didn't know it was just a, for a, a logging uh, permit or, or roadway. So, and then, and then this project, you know, whenever I, you know, I ordered all the material from, I built it myself with about three other guys and it took me all summer to do it. But whenever I first initially did this and ordered all the material from DC, tried to call into the county department and granted, I probably should have done a better job. I never, I've never built anything that needed to permit. So I don't, I, this is all new to me. And, uh, so basically, whenever the material, I just said, well, I'll just build it because it's got a septic permit. I shouldn't have any issues. And I laid it out exactly where I wanted it. And that's that was the, you know, and then I'm the one that called it, you know, called it and tried to, when I got it done, to get a permit. So, you know, um, we actually had somebody wanting to buy. Um, I own the, this is my fiance, Janet. She's the actually, she, she's the property owner of this 
where this barn is sitting, which is 2.9 acres. I personally own um, on the be the left of that one picture on the barn. There's a there's a mobile home on an acre. I own that, and then in that, on the other side of the woods, adjoining my, that property, is another acre that I'm getting ready to put a home on for my son right here. Yeah, where, where that arrow is, that's getting ready to have a um, Clear Creek home uh, put in there. We're applying for all the permits for that, and then like that far north trailer where Jenner Drive is up there. That's the trailer I own, and the barn sits directly behind there. So, like I said, that's within their septic, that septic system that's on the Janet's property was already there. So that's kind of where I was like, well, I'll just build a barn. You know, I didn't never, never clue that it would be this. And we built, and the reason I built a 2,400 square foot barn, we have a 40 foot camper and a crew cab dually. So we got to get that inside. And that's why that building 16 foot ceilings with a 40 by 60 to, to put, you know, my antique trackers and some camper and a truck in so apologies and like I said, I've tried to work with you know do everything that I've been asked to do and um, want to make it right so and if you look at north of that on the <laughs> other side of the street there there's mate you know there's big building there's a horse person that's horse stables and stuff that the trunks own and again and they're building you know they got barns bigger than what you know what I I think what I built so I, I was going on that too Anybody have any questions for the petitioner? Jackie, this is Mike Carmen. Also, to uh, representing the petition, also to speak on behalf of the petitioner for me. Hi, Mike. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Uh, anybody have any questions for Mike or the well, petitioner? Well, oh. I, I have I have statements I want to make for the petitioner. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry, Mike. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, a couple things. Uh, Bernie referred to the um, Patriot report earlier, and then Jackie or Tammy or others showed it on the screen. Uh, if if you haven't had a chance to read that, or it, it it needs to be read because it actually questions that the last two variances are needed. I mean, there's an assumption this is a sinkhole. The Patriot report. I'll read just a few lines out of it. Uh, only a single potential karst feature, as indicated by the owner, was observed. Uh, he refers to it as an area of potential, well, I'm sorry, wrong line. Uh, it should be noted, no map sinkholes were present on the parcel discussed here. However, three closed depressions are present within a radius of half a mile from this site. He refer, goes on to refer to it as, uh, uh, it is possible that the previously pictured feature is a small sinkhole. The minor depression may also be the result of previous earthwork activities on the site, natural tree root decay, and or natural erosion piping processes. It should be noted that the feature does not exist within the currently mapped Indiana Geological Survey sinkhole inventory. Uh, and he goes on to make similar comments. Think that it, it's, it's a possible sinkhole. It's certainly by that report at least not established to be a sinkhole. So now we have these two requests for variances. Both are premised on the fact that it is already established to be a sinkhole feature. And, and I, I would submit that I'm not sure the evidence establishes that yet. At least there's nothing in the staff report that makes that determination. I know Terry uh, Quillen's uh, report refers to it as an SCA. I mean, the whole discussion is on the assumption that it constitutes a sinkhole. What I'm suggesting is, I, I don't know the variance is needed. The reality is Terry made some interesting uh, proposals or suggestions. That was a page, that was his, uh, you can see the email exchange there with, Terry and Tammy and Kelsey, and I believe Kelsey's online. Uh, Terry's not gonna be able to join tonight, but I think Kelsey is, is here, can speak for him. But that drawing you see there is what Terry drew up, which basically with the addition of the, the drainage, that 30 foot drainage he shows is an easement coming off the building, intending that the drainage from the roof of the building, Bernie was asking about earlier, would be piped or directed as necessary to, into that and not and diverted away from going eastward and into the SCA area. Terry's suggesting the possibility of you look at this as redefining the SCA area, taking the building outside of it, maintain an SCA area, and create the controlled drainage away from the SCA area so as not to risk that any concentrated drainage does do something surface and causes anything to open up. And I would submit that the, 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 the information in the environmental report creates some unusual circumstance with regard to this property. You're, we're talking about requiring two variances on the uncertainty of a feature that even exists, 
there's a there's a pretty reasonable and very practical workaround on that issue as suggested by, by Terry Quillen in, in his comments and in his suggested uh, redefine of that. And so I would encourage the board to find that there are practical difficulties, at least as those two second two variances, they're both premised on the location of the structure relative to the sinkhole and find the uh, approve the variances needed or not, approve them. And in doing so, you can impose the conditions of approval as suggested. Tammy has written some up to, to serve that purpose about the drainage easement to be granted and directing that. And I would suggest you could go to even a little bit further than what Tammy has put in her suggested uh, possible findings or conditions and, and be specific that the roof drainage from that building be captured and directed south or southwesterly into that uh, drainage easement area and away from the SCA and make that a additional condition of approval and approve the two the last two variances. As to the first one regarding the building, uh, in some ways it is a, a timing issue. Uh, uh, Chad Olson is who was speaking earlier. I'm not his name is not shown on that. It says Brooklyn on the screen there when he when he was speaking. That's Chad Olson. Yeah, I did my daughter. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's my daughter, Brooklyn. Okay, all right. Uh, he identified Janet Neal, the property owner's uh, earlier as, as fiance. Uh, plans to build a residence to, and move on to this property is there. There's one reason for building the pole barn. And uh, I personally asked Chad, why, why so big? Why the size? I'm sure you, you may have asked him last month. I, I don't know. But uh, part of his answer dealt with wanting to park an RV inside, not out on the lot. You do those kind of things in anticipation you're going to be living here and set up the, the parking for that. Uh, if he has residence on this property, the building is not too large. It's only too large until such time as he has a residence on the property. Uh, a, a accessory building incidental to his residence there, this is not a problem. So now it becomes a question of timing. The building cannot be relocated. It can only be either remain or be demolished. Uh, I'm told that it's not possible to structurally reduce it in size and get it down to 1750. So it becomes a leave it or remove it. And if they're going to reside there, and they're required to remove it. As soon as he moves onto the property, and gets a, a residence built there, moves on the property, he could put the same building right back up legally. It's not, it, it's not too large. So, I mean, that creates a very unusual set circumstance. Uh, now that whole issue is premised on this being also the residence. So it'd be an unusual condition of approval, but I, I could certainly suggest that a condition of approval of the variance with regard to the size of the structure be tied to that this does become the residential lot within a defined period. And I frankly would suggest three years as, as being plenty, being long enough, but also allowing for the time to, for a stick built structure. He was not anticipating a manufactured home, at least that wasn't the plan. So the time to build a residence and make that the residence, and then this whole, this whole issue becomes moot. And I would hate to see the economic waste of removing a structure that becomes lawful at a later time. And actually that even, even uh, indirectly trumps another issue, which is not a variance request. And that's the whole issue of the building permit. If he had lived here first and then built the structure, he wouldn't have even needed a building permit. Would not be required to build an accessory building himself, even with the French assistance. He didn't contract it out for professionals to build his own accessory building on his residential lot. No building permits required. I mean, it's unfortunate that the building's up first and residents will come second. If it were reversed, we wouldn't even have this conversation. And I would uh, encourage you to uh, find the unusual circumstances uh, presented in, in the timing and in the circumstances in which this got built. Uh, add appropriate conditions of approval, as Tammy has suggested some, and I would go a little bit further with regard to capturing the drainage off the roof. Add a condition of approval that this becomes a residential lot. And then, and frankly, then the whole issue, the permit and the size of the building become moot. And, and, it would, and that certainly avoids the economic waste that otherwise would be inherent in, in, in requiring removal. Thank you. Anyone have any questions for Mike or the petitioner? Uh, not for Mike, but I'd like to just, um, Mr. Carmen brought up some very interesting points, and I find myself swayed by most of them. 
um, except for one, and that is the, the designation of the sinkhole conservancy area, because as you know, and everyone knows there, we, we live on sifting sands, so to speak. That being said, I find that, um, you know, the, the logic that you uh, presented in terms of uh, the petitioner's investment, his uh, building of the property, um, the steps we could take to, take to mitigate the environmental concerns are, are convincing. And um, I would, if, if it is approved or if somebody makes a motion to approve it, I would um, ask that because these are strange times that the petitioner be given four years uh, for building a home because it's such a strange environment and we don't know what's ahead. But that being said, I'm still, as you all know, me on this uh, this commission and others that I am concerned about uh, sinkhole conservancy areas because they affect not only the land on which they sit but surrounding lands as well. So that's that's for what it's worth. I find myself swayed by most of Mr. Carmen's uh, arguments. I don't know how others on the plan the Board of Zoning Appeals are thinking about this or if there's something that I'm missing. I'd like to be in, be informed. I would like to make one point of correction, and that is, um, even if there was a residence here, there would, and then this structure was coming on to the site to be built by the owner. Um, there is a state provision that the building department has to work through. Sometimes we call it like the log cabin rule. If you're doing all the work yourself, um, regardless of not maybe having to get a building permit one would still have to get an improvement location permit yes. from planning and zoning to place the structure on the site. So just wanted to make that clarification. Larry, did you have something you needed to add? I just wanted to comment, uh, first of all, that, yeah, there's a Indiana car survey and Indiana sequel survey. And frequently we find car features that are not shown on that survey. They're too small or they've developed since the survey was done. Uh, some of the data is very old and does not show anything other than sinkholes that were vis visible from aerial photography. Uh, we have more sophisticated technology now uh, through our LIDAR layers and so on where we can see uh, the car's features and sinkholes. Secondly, this FCA was platted. Uh, the reason we plat them in subdivisions is to alert uh, both homeowners and builders as to their location. Okay, and so presumably if you buy a lot, you look at the uh, plat and you know that there's restrictions such as easements, uh, such as sinkhole conservancy areas. Uh, and the fact that nothing shows up now or it's hard to see is somewhat explained by the fact that there's huge building that's been built over the sinkhole area. So who knows what was there and what was present before. Uh, again, uh, in regard to requiring a building permit, I would prefer if you're going to grant the variance, just grant a variance for size and do not put an additional burden on the planning department to, to monitor whether or not this is, comes into compliance in three or four years. Uh, because they may change their mind, they may want to sell it, um, they may not you know, choose to build in the next three or four years, then they would have to come back in for another variance. So I guess my question, is, I guess my point is, if it's your desire, if you find practical difficulties exist, uh, approve the variances with the conditions requiring the written commitments. Could I, uh, is, is Mr. Quillman on, um... Is he here tonight or is Kelsey here? Sorry, he's not here. Uh, but Kelsey is here. I'd like to, her to talk to us about this sinkhole conservancy area. Mm -hmm. And sure. thank you, Kelsey. Um, so, so Terry um, was the one that went out to view the site and based on his site visit and the Patriot report, um, his main concern was just making sure that the drainage on the site as a whole was um, was managed properly. And so that was the reason why he created um, or proposed, is proposing the drainage easement if that is agreeable to 
um, to the board here. Um, not required, obviously, we're not making a decision on this, but um, we can bring it to the drainage board if we want them to help make this decision. So, Kelsey, but do you have an, you know, that's a lot of roof area and that's a lot of runoff. Do you have uh, any idea about, um, you know, what, what are the risks and what, sure. I mean, yeah, so that's kind of the reason for the drainage easement because you know that you're creating extra impervious surface. You're tra you're changing the the drainage on the site. Um, nothing in our current ordinance is um, going to um, force the creation of any type of practice to detain the water or anything for a site like this. But um, the drainage easement would at least ensure that it's crossing the property in a non-erosive manner and you're not blocking drainage and dumping it on the next parcel. Um, so you're just having some type of condition on the property so that you know it's being conveyed in a non-erosive manner. So I'm kind of left not knowing what to think about this. I've got a question, Margaret, or pardon me. Mary Beth, excuse me. Go ahead. Okay, so, you know, I don't, I don't know that we can do anything. This is, a, I'm just thinking out loud. I don't know that we can do anything with this as far as the sinkhole conservancy, whether it exists or not. I did read the Patriot Report and I've seen circumstances exactly like he describes. Uh, but at the same time, we've got a platted sinkhole conservancy area. So if we would eliminate the other two variances, it seems like we would have to see a final plat that eliminated the two sinkhole conservancy areas to begin with. Or if they found that the sinkhole was there, then then the gentleman's got nothing again. So I don't know if, if, if uh, Larry or Mike want to say anything about that or any of the other members, but that's kind of my, the first of a couple questions I've got. I'm inclined if we approve this to go ahead and, and just do all three of them. And uh, again, I don't wanna mess with the timeline and that that actually got, that Larry answered my other question was, is there a reason why we would wanna limit or put a maximum amount of time for them to put the dwelling on it instead of just giving a variance for the size and, and let them move on down the road? So my first question, we can't really do a, do a petition to prove a variance unless we see a plat that doesn't show the sinkhole conservancy area, which would make the variance not necessary. Is that correct, Larry? I think you can, uh, I, I think that our condition was to, if the variance is approved, to uh, require that the plat uh, be amended to, to uh, yeah, that the request of the plat be amended to uh, amend the sinkhole conservancy area. Right. So if it's amended to show nothing, if it's amended to show nothing, then having those two variances with the petition don't cause him a problem in future years. Correct. Well, I, I, the the answer is is to amend the single conservancy area, uh, just to remove the area from where the building is. Okay. There will still be a single conservancy area, I believe, to the east of the building. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Let me, let me be, I didn't do a very good job there. I apologize. My question is, if we, if they amend the sinkhole conservancy area on a final plat and they have a study done and they deem that there's no sinkhole there as Patriot says it's possible. If we go ahead and approve the variance with the, with the second two variance requests, that doesn't leave that doesn't leave Mr. Olson in a bad position. I think it just make, it means that, and I'm hesitant to use this term, but it could make the variance, the need for the variance moot, but it will not yes. be moot until the time that the plat is actually amended to re remove the Seco Conservancy. Okay. Um, and I think the whole idea of the commitments was if you grant the variance, this card, these commitments really take care of the issues. Okay. okay. You can feel I got it. Heard that staff's comments and drainage comments have been addressed, uh, so that you can grant the variance if you find practical difficulties, and be assured that staff concerns are addressed. Okay. And then the other comment I've got, 
uh, or I have, excuse me. Could you, Tammy, would you put up the back of that building again? All right, yeah, thanks. And I, I absolutely respect what Terry put in his email and what Kelsey is saying, but I, I don't really know that I see a need looking at that topography for having a 30 foot easement that that goes across the property perpendicular to the direction of everything else. It looks to me like that flow is uniform and it's a sheet flow versus a concentrated flow that were that potentially could be directed out to one spot onto the other property. Uh, so my inclination is, is <coughs> this to amend the sinkhole conservancy area to reflect what's physically out there and not put that 30 foot easement through the middle of that property. And then the one last thing I wanna make sure the petitioner understands is, it, or it, make sure he's aware of what the restrictions are on doing anything on the east side of that building in that sinkhole conservancy area or any drainage easement uh, moving forward. Mike Carpenter, may I speak? I'm done, Mike. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I know we haven't we haven't gone. You've not had a chance to go to the public yet, so I don't mean to to follow up your procedure. But uh, <clears throat> I guess my suggestion is that I would ask you to consider is that the possibility that that is an actual sinkhole area is an uncertainty. Mm -hmm create practical difficulties that would allow you to approve the variances. Approve those two variances gives you the lever to require some drainage management. Uh, I understand, I, I kind of, I agree with uh, Bernie's point about the shedding as opposed to concentrated flow, but I would su suggest that you need a condition of approval of the variance that requires that the roof drainage be captured from the east side and directed south or southwest so it does not go into the FCA area. That would address Margaret's concern that maybe this would develop into more of a sinkhole at a later time. Uh, 10 years from now, 15, let's, let's take the water out of that area, capture it, get it behind the building, get it going south and southwest. Maybe it doesn't need to be a 30 foot easement clear across the property, but we need to get it past and, and on the slope area downward from the SCA area to keep that extra water coming off the roof to going into that. And that, I think, deals with con those concerns with the SCA area. As to the building itself, I, I, I didn't mean to suggest, uh, yeah, I agree, uh, improvement location permits, different building permit, one is required, one is not, but at this time it's not a residence. So a uh, condition of approval on that first variance that he followed through and get the actor from back Building permit is certainly appropriate. It's not yet a residence, so that exception doesn't yet apply. I was trying to suggest that it would apply at some point, and I'd hate to see the building wasted before then. So, Margaret, did you have a question? It's just uh, just a point of clarification. So, um, am I to understand correctly that the in order to uh, approve this um, structure? and to not cause too much harm to the owner, that we would have to remove the sinkhole conservancy area notation on the plat? No. No, okay, okay, thank you, thank you. That's it, that's my only Any question. further questions for the petitioner or Mr. Carmen? Okay, seeing none, is there anyone else here that wishes to speak on behalf of this petition? Seeing none, is there anyone here that wishes to speak against this petition? Seeing none, uh, I guess we would be ready for a motion. Pick one. Would you put the recommended motions up on the screen for me, Tammy, please? Does that have the case number on it? No, I can't fit it all. So these That's are the okay. three case numbers. Okay, let, I, I can I can pull it off. I'll be okay. Okay. Can you still hear me? Yep. yep. Okay. In regard to case number 
2008-VAR-61 and 2101-VAR-01 and 2101-VAR-02 Design Standards Variance Residential Structure, Chapter 802, Design Standards Variance Buildable Area, Chapter 804, Design Standards Variance Sinkhole Conservancy Area, Chapter 829. I move that we approve the variance. I believe that practical, practical difficulties have been met based on the following conditions. met in the form of a written commitment by the petitioner. One, submit a final plat amendment petition to satisfy the MS4 coordinator request to amend the sinkhole conservancy area and add a drainage easement to lot 26 of the Pinewood subdivision as depicted in exhibit six or as may be adjusted by the MS4 operator coordinator for the county. Two, add a note on the plat stating nothing is to be placed in the drainage easement, which will be signed by the owner upon receipt recording of the final plat amendment as referred to in exhibit five. Three, submit a grading permit application for review prior to any further construction or installing <clears throat> culvert for the driveway as referred to in exhibit five. Four, submit a residential driveway permit application as requested by the highway department. And I'll add a condition number five that the runoff from the roof on the east wall line that, fought, that lies adjacent to the sinkhole conservancy area uh, be installed with a gutter and a downspout so as to direct the water south and west of the southeast corner of the structure. I second that. Hey, Larry, you want to call the roll? I, I sure will. Uh, the vote is on petition number 2009-VR-61, 2001-VR-01, and 2001-VR-02 of the deal residential storage structure variance for size from chapter 802, the deal billable area variance from chapter 804, and the deal sequel conservancy area standard variance from chapter 829, respectively. Uh, the variances are for a property located at 8458 North Jenner Drive. Uh, the petition is uh, Neil. And uh, a vote in favor is a vote to approve the three variances with the amended findings showing practical difficulties in utilization of the property for all three variances and subject to the following conditions in the form of a written commitment. Uh, to submit a final plat amendment petition to satisfy the MS4 coordinator uh, and request to amend the sequel conservancy area and add a drain easement to lot 26 of Pinewood subdivision, subdivision as depicted in exhibit six. Two, add a note to the plat stating nothing is to be placed in the drain easement, which will be signed by the owner upon recording of the plat amendment as referred to in exhibit five. Three, submit a grading permit application or review prior to any further construction or installing a culvert for the driveway as referred to in Exhibit 5. Four, submit a residential driveway permit application as requested by the Highway Department. And five, uh, the additional condition uh, added to the motion to install a downspout, gutters and downspouts on the east side of the property to direct the water uh, or on, the, on the storage structure to direct the water away from the Cars conserves the area uh, on the plat. Again, a vote in favor is a vote to approve all three variances based upon the amendment finding of practical difficulties and subject to the conditions uh, in the form of a written commitment set forth in, in the motion. Okay, I'll call the roll now. Uh, Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Rudy Garitas? Yes. Mara Clemens? Yes. Mayor Bessie Marchek. Yes. Uh, the, all three variances are approved, subject to the conditions, by a 4 to 0 vote of the BZA. Okay. Next up, we have case number 2011 VAR 95. 
Anne? Anne, you're on mute. Thank you. I took a moment. Uh, thank you, Mary Beth. So uh, this petition is a design, design standards variance from Chapter 804 for a front yard setback, um, structure setback. The property is located in Benton North Township, Section 35 at 9308 North Gray Avenue. The property is a uh, two platted lots. It's approximately not 0 0.9 acres and it's zoned suburban residential. So it's on Lake Lemon. Uh, the comprehensive plan designates this area as rural residential. So the intent of this design standard request um, is for the purpose of issuing an after the fact improvement location permit for a residential structure that was constructed without a permit that's encroaching approximately 20 feet into the front yard setback. On the left is a site conditions map showing uh, their current existing residence and North Gray Avenue, a local road to the Northeast. Uh, the property is sloped, as you can see on the bottom right. Um, the majority of the buildable area is located in proximity to North Gray Avenue, limiting possible locations for any residential accessory structures. Uh, so quick summary from what I just said, built without an approved permit, uh, 20 feet approximately from the edge of pavement of North Gray Avenue. The front setback for this area would be 40 feet from center line. It would be 15 feet of right of way that's listed on the plat plus 25 foot front yard setback. So this is an approximate encroachment of 20 feet. If, if approved, this variance would allow the structure to remain in its location. Uh, if denied, the petitioner would have to it, they would be required to comply with the 25 foot front yard setback from the dedicated right of way. Um, this case was continued from last month. The petitioner uh, had an unavoidable uh, sudden conflict and was not able to be at the meeting to answer any questions. Um, in this uh, past month, I have received a letter of support and took two phone calls from adjoining property owners uh, that voiced their support. This is an aerial imagery from April 2020. The It was built later in the year, so it's not shown, but I want, did want to give kind of an updated photo. The yellow circle is the approximate location of the shed. So on the left is the petitioner submitted site plan with the uh, shed outlined next to Gray Avenue. The bottom right photo is um, looking, let's see, that would be looking Northeast, so at the end of Gray Road, Gray Avenue, looking past the property. So staff recommendation is to deny the design standard variance from the front yard setback requirement of Chapter 804 based on the findings of facts, specifically finding C, um, that there are not practical difficulties in the use of the property as defined in Chapter 801. Uh, the petitioner constructed the building without approved building permits, therefore no practical difficulties do not exist. Um, so overall, uh, there were not favorable findings for all three criteria. Does anybody have any questions for me? Any questions for Ann? I have a question, Ann. On page uh, 61 on um, A1 at the bottom, it says conclusion, the approval could impair the stability of a natural scenic area. How will that, how is that affected? What do you mean by that? Let's see. Which page was that on? 
61. So this is me. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, it may not be 61 because this I kept a copy from uh, the previous. So this uh, is under findings oh. of fact, front yard setback, and it's the very first point. Yeah. I apologize. I have an old copy in front of me. So I was just wanting to know what would be the uh, uh, natural or scenic impairment. Um, mainly that this is a, a scenic area because of the proximity to Lake Lemon and that the property um, is mainly sloped. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Margaret? I have one and uh, it just has to do with uh, proximity to the center line of the road and how um, the location of this shed might hinder road improvements in the future. And I, yeah. So um, North Gray Avenue is very narrow. Uh, I, I, um, if I recall correctly, if you had a car coming at you, you probably would be off pavement just a little bit in order to pass safely. Um, so I think it is a valid concern on this road. It is small, it is private. Um, the the plant only dedicates 15 feet of right of way so that's smaller than of subdivision we would see now um, but as you can see from the bottom right photo it really is quite close um, it's a question that i have not asked the petitioner whether or not there are any underground utilities in that area if this road ever for some reason was triggered to be improved the shed very well could be an issue thank you ann thank you I don't believe that Gray Avenue is a public road, just for clarification on that. Yes, it is a private road. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions for staff? Is the petitioner here? I I'm am. sorry. I'm, hang on just a second. I'm sorry, uh, Mark or Mary Beth. I was muted. Okay, so <laughs> it, Gray Avenue is not a, but there's a, is that an easement or is it a right of way? Is it dedicated to the owners? How is that structured? It was dedicated when it was platted. Dedicated to who? The county. It's a setback. Okay, so it is a public roadway. It is not. No. Bernie, we have a few instances of platted subdivisions where there's right of way shown, but the road is still privately maintained. Okay, so it's a dedicated right of way, but it's privately maintained. Right. Uh, uh, Bert, and, just to, just and, to hang on, that. just a, one, one more quick question. Okay. So this would be similar to Cockrell Drive over near uh, southwest corner of the property, or pardon me, of the, the county over off Bowling Lane? I think so. The, the answer is it's platted, uh, dedicate, it's dedicated right away. It's shown in the plat. However, it does not become a county road until such time as the county formally accepts the road. And uh, what has happened is subdivisions have been built, platted and built uh, with dedicated right of way. And then uh, for whatever reason, they weren't required to bring the road up to county standards. And accordingly, they remain a private road. Uh, but in the event the road was brought up to county standards, uh, the county could accept it and it would become a public road. Uh, because it's a dedicated right of way, the setback is from uh, the line where the right of way was dedicated. Right, so who, I guess my question is, who owns the roadway? Uh, it's still owned by the, uh, well, it, it becomes nebulous because, uh, again, it, it's dedicated public right of way, um, but it's not been formally accepted for maintenance. Okay. Put it that way. Uh, so it's, so, and so the, basically the right of way is still a property line. So we're talking about a setback from a property line. Yeah, I mean, okay. it's, it's dedicated okay. public right of way. The county does not maintain it. Okay, that, that, that that, that's very clear. Thank you very much. Okay, any further questions for staff? Is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? Yes, thank you. 
Um, Sir, can I get you to state your name? Doug Bansell, Douglas Bansell, 93. Can you raise your right Avenue. hand? Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, sir. You may proceed. Okay, thank you. Um, I, let me start by continuing on the, this last discussion with a, of the roadway. Um, the residents of the area, in fact, are responsible for maintaining this road. We, last year, when my wife and I took over that responsibility from, the, from someone else in the community, we called the county and asked them if they would maintain the road, which they have not done ever. They said, no, they would not. So this is a, a 10 foot wide private road. Um, it will never ever be widened or improved, partly uh, for two reasons. If you were to, this picture on the right, if you were to turn around and look the other direction, you would see a cul-de-sac um, about, oh, maybe 100 yards down the road that is surrounded by seven houses that are built right on the road. Right behind you on the left, if you were to turn around and look to the, to the uh, on the lake side of this road, you would see a steep slope. So there's no way the road would be widened towards the shed. Um, in regards to the utilities and things, if you look at this, uh, all the utilities are on the opposite side of the road. In fact, and there is a, a wide kind of a flat easement there that I actually maintain and, and cut with my, my mower. Um, you'll also see propane tanks. There are other outbuildings uh, behind you that you can't see here that are built on the road. Um, there, there's no way that this road would be widened except possibly to the right, but we're not gonna do it. We, we, we have, we're struggling to maintain it now anyway. Um, one other slight correction, in fact, uh, the, the shed is 15, encroaches 15 feet, not 20. It's uh, 40 minus 25 equals 15. Um, in regards to conclusion C, the, uh, that the, I, I don't understand uh, Anne's logic at all, but let me just state that the reason the shed was built in that location is because it won't go anywhere else. That is pretty much the only location on the entire property. It's almost an acre, but it's about the only location on the property that does not cause uh, a problem elsewhere. The top section of the property, um, which goes for maybe uh, 40 feet, 35 feet from the edge of the road is somewhat flat. It's, um, it's actually about a two and a half percent slope. Immediately downhill the, um, from that shed, it picks up steam. Um, the shed itself, as you can see, it's kind of um, slopes downhill. It's on about a six and a half percent slope. If I were to move the shed, if I could move the shed um, down that hill, it would be on 12.5% or 14% slope. And I mean, it's, um, that's problematic though. The reason for the shed in the first place is so uh, to hose a, house a garden tractor and a, and a trailer. So we had to put it on a flat section of the property. And in fact, it's on the least convenient spot farthest away from the house for us, but it's the only, only place on the property that's on a flat spot that is not right next to the house. I have other pictures if you wanted to see them, uh, you know, a lot of pictures around the house to show you all the other areas of the lot. And truly, that's the only place the shed could go. Um, if I could just back up very quickly to, to Ann's um, finding on A that the that this location could impair the scenic quality of Lake Lemon somehow. Note that the shed is 
as far away from the lake as it possibly could get on the slot. Anywhere else that I actually, there's no other good place to build it, but you, you can't see it from the lake. You can barely see it from the lake. So um, I would also like to note that on this end of the road here, um, which was built in the, in the 50s, most, mostly when the lake was, was developed, seven out of the nine houses are built as close to the road as the shed closer. or closer. In fact, you can't see it right behind that. That shed is a, is a house that's built same distance from from the road. So when I built it, I, I, uh, I apologize for not got, getting the building permit, but I truly did not realize that there was a set, this front setback. I was paying attention to the side setback. I didn't realize that there was a front setback and I did build it to code thinking that if uh, something happened, I would at least be be within uh, be within the code but i i missed the missed this front setback but i have been working with the building department to um to um go legal on this and, and get this and i uh, implore you to let this slide through here because truly there's no other place to put it and i'd be happy to answer any other questions you might have Anyone have any questions for the petitioner? Uh, I might interject. My name is Russ Herndon. Well, Russ, are you uh, speaking in support of the petition or yes, against? Yes, yes, ma'am, if that's allowable. Okay, I'll we'll get to you in just a second. Just Certainly. a second, sir. Any questions for the petitioner from staff or from the board? Okay. Uh, is there anyone else here that would like to speak on behalf of this petition? Sir? Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, please state your name. I just missed my cue. My name is Russ Herndon. Well, do you well, the, tell the truth and nothing but the truth, sir? I do. Thank you. Proceed. And while the moniker on the blank screen said Lauren Wood Builders, uh, I'm an employee in the design team for Lauren Wood Builders, but this is in no capacity for Lauren. Um, a personal friend of the band cells. Um, I also live on the lake. The lake is a unique uh, community and environment where uh, the density is much greater than anything allowable by our codes today, of course. But there's this uh, camaraderie, this relationship, this understanding where people, uh, role with the other folks needs uh, they help one another it's it's a really wonderful environment and as um, as Doug said if you cast if you could if you'd want to cast uh, the area there on gray road and see the density of the homes on down the road and actually right on the road you can see where that uh, by natural grade these little buildings and propane tanks and sheds and smattering of parking areas have uh, have just uh, followed the uh, the natural terrain. At the end of the day, I think it's better than folks trying to uh, notch them into the hillside and bring them on down the hill. At any given time in, in my role with Lauren Wood Builders, we have two to three or four projects happening around the lake, and we've come to understand um, how this how this works and a, a unique a unique perspective, which you know. Uh, is is that our front yard is our backyard in terms of our codes and things. Um, no one really cares too much about, about the backyard. Of, of course, we want to de definitely respect uh, the setback requirements, but the focus is on uh, on the lakeside. That's that's the, uh, your front door. Your so uh, I would encourage us to before we uh, go too far tonight is to just to look at the uh, a gray road uh, and see and see the relationship of the uh, built homes, the larger structures, to the road and consider that. Uh, I was over with Doug the day we were musing about where a shed might go and my goodness for uh, for someone to drive a tractor into a little shed um, 
as we roll over the hill, it, the slope just starts to grow. So um, looking at the other buildings around the area, it just seemed like it, uh, uh, it would meet the requirements. I didn't realize, uh, you know, there's a, basically an abandoned property adjacent to, to the west. And uh, so those lines weren't clear when we were having our discussion that day. Thank you. Any questions for me? Any questions? Okay. Anyone else here that would like to speak on behalf of the petition? Seeing none, is there anybody here that would like to speak against the petition? Seeing none, uh, I, we would be ready for a motion. Board members, make a motion. I, I, I could try to do one. Um, okay. Well, first of all, I have to say that uh, in Mr. Bansell's uh, description, he uh, indicated that he takes care of the road and that um, in that shed, I'm sure, are tools and um, appliances to take care of that road. And he's kind of providing a common service. He also cares for the, the area underneath the utilities. And so for me um, to move that shed and especially to place it on a slope, which would make uh, the access to those tools uh, a little bit more difficult and uh, maybe practically difficult for him, especially as he ages, that um, I find that practical difficulties exist. So I uh, move that we approve uh, in case number 2011-VAR-95, um, even though there are extenuating circumstances, uh, the fact that it's a private road and the fact that uh, there, I believe practical difficulties has been met, especially in the performance of communal uh, services. I move that we approve um, the design standards variance to chapter 804 in the front yard setback. I second. Call the roll the, course, please. The vote is on petition number 2011-VR95, Bantle Foot Yard Setback Variance to Chapter 804 for the property located at 9308 North Gray Avenue. Uh, a vote in favor is a vote to approve the variance uh, based upon the findings of fact, uh, uh, finding a, uh, with a find of practical difficulties uh, to amend the findings regarding the utilization of the property. Again, uh, a vote is to grant the variance. Uh, I vote is to grant the variance. Uh, Bertie Gertas? No. Uh, Vic, uh, Mary Beth Kosmarczyk? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Uh, Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Uh, the variance is granted by a three to one vote with one okay. uh, negative. Thank you, you have a good evening. Thank you so much. Okay, next up we have case number 201, I'm sorry, 2101-VAR-03 fields parking variance. Uh, and this is, oops, sorry. It's me, Mary Beth, Rebecca. Rebecca. Are there two petitions here? Uh, no, it's one petition that has two parts. Okay. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Council, the right 
Okay, so um, this is a project area that you many of you have heard before. Um, this is a request for a uh, parking standards variance to chapter 806 um, for property at 6189 South Fairfax Road. Um, <clears throat> the request is for two parking standards variances, one for the parking access aisle width and one for the parking setback requirement. Um, and in this instance, the petitioners are requesting these variances so that they can create two additional parking spots at the petition site. Um, a little bit of background here, the petitioners requested and received um, approval by the Board of Zoning Appeals for a conditional use, which allows them to utilize the uh, site for a tourist home. Um, current zoning of this petition is suburban residential. Um, and the comprehensive plan shows this as designated communities. This is the slope map with the petition site delineated in the green box. Um, I will have some slides in a moment that illustrate more clearly where they are proposing the two additional parking lots, um, but it, they are essentially um, on the west side. On the east side of the building in this photo, um, petitioners have uh, delineated spaces for four uh, parking spots. Um, and their goal is to add an additional two, like I said, on the west side. And they're sort of these uh, uh, parallel spots um, indicated here in the orange and the blue, which of course this image is not to scale. But it's these two spots that we're talking about in terms of the request for the variance. Um, site photos, again, this is the east side of the, the store or the petition site where there are four spots uh, planned or in existence. Uh, this is looking along the north side of the building. This is the gravel that you see um, on the right side of the building is utilized by the neighbor. It's a shared access. Um, so consequently, the barriers that you see here were installed um, to prevent uh, traffic coming or crossing the property um, off of Fairfax. It had ended up being a sort of cut through um, and so the barriers were put up there to prevent that uh, behavior. Here's a photo um, more close up of the west side where they are wanting to put the two parking spots. This is looking south um, for orientation. Of course, that's Fairfax on the right side. Uh, here's an illustration as part of their conditional use request, uh, they were uh, granted a right-of-way waiver, um, which is illustrated in the green. Uh, the yellow indicates the spots that they want, and then the property line is there in the red. Um, so without this waiver, essentially the spots being proposed would be ultimately uh, no longer on private property. So it is, it's the right with waiver that they were um, granted that uh, creates this private property piece or place for them to, to request the parking. Um, this is the site plan that the, the petitioner submitted. Again, we've got the four spots that fit perfectly fine on the east side. And it's the two here um, that planning staff was looking at as part of this variance. This is another illustration of the, that shows the right of way uh, width waiver over here. 
here is the letter from the petitioner requesting these variances. Um, and regarding recommendation, uh, staff does recommend that we deny the design standards variance to the parking lot access aisle whip, um, specifically due to finding C, which I will uh, uh, address here in a second. And regarding the second piece of this variance, um, also deny the request for a design standards variance to the parking lot setback. Um, that's required in chapter 806. Um, also, again, related to finding C. Uh, so when we look at finding C, um, uh, we, so the uh, zoning ordinance for a tourist home uh, only requires two, two parking spaces um, because there are two guest rooms at this, uh, at this site. Um, however, they were granted or permitted up to 14 guests um, during the day who could, could visit and come and go. Um, so we feel additional um, cars at the, at the location and the narrowness of the parking aisle access width is definitely a public safety concern. Um, and so while the proposed use and related parking meet the terms of the ordinance, um, their request for additional parking spaces doesn't meet the ordinance. Uh, and we don't believe this is a practical difficulty um, created by the ordinance outright. Um, and further, approval of the variance is not necessary for the petitioner to utilize the site uh, for the historic adaptive reuse that's intended for the property. Um, and similar findings for the parking setback. Um, the petitioner or the requirement for the 10-foot the parking setback, again, is a public safety concern. Um, and we feel like the approval of the variance isn't necessary for the petitioner to use this site in, in as a historic adaptive reuse. Um, and I want to, I just want to quickly flip back to some actual numbers. Um, so um, regarding the parking aisle width, the requirement is 15 feet. Um, but with this proposal, the width is as narrow as three feet, seven inches um, at, a, at the smallest to 10 but one inch at the widest. Um, and then regarding the parking setback numbers, the minimum requirement is 10 feet from right of way um, in their proposed setback. It, again, at its narrowest is three feet, seven inches. Um, so uh, significantly off uh, from what is required. Um, are there any questions? Questions for staff? No questions. Is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? I am here. This is Kay Fields. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am, I do. Thank you, Kay. Proceed. Um, Rudy and I are requesting a variance to have two parking places on the west side of this building. And I believe, and Rebecca, you may need to speak to this. I think we are the drawing that we have submitted that y'all are looking at now does have two parking places, but I thought I was under the impression we were already approved for one parking place on the west side and the four on the east. We would like to request a variance to get two parking places on the west because as Rebecca pointed out, we have been approved to have 14 visitors at this facility during the day and seven overnight guests. And I think limiting the number of vehicles to four will really encourage um, too many people coming in too many cars at once or perhaps parking on the street, which would make it even more of a, a safety, public safety issue. So 
from our perspective, the west side of this building has been a parking lot since the 1930s. There, there is a very large um, uh, shoulder on Fairfax Road. There is a curb on Fairfax Road. There is a green space that we uh, put in after meeting with the highway department. We have closed off the southwest driveway from this west lot. The only way to get out of this lot is through the north driveway onto Fairfax, which is much safer than Sanders Second. Um, I don't believe that having two cars parked in this area would, would make public safety on Fairfax any worse than it is currently because cars have been doing this for years in this parking lot. I do disagree with what Rebecca said about a practical difficulty. If we are limited to only four parking places, it does affect our business plan, uh, particularly with the number of people that we have been approved to house at this um, tourist home. Any questions for me? Anyone have any questions for the petitioner? Margaret, you're on mute. Well, one aspect that uh, strikes me about this property, number one, is uh, how well you're restoring it and how what an asset it is to the community. And But one of the weaknesses of uh, historically re using and readapting a property are some of the physical limitations as you're finding. And I find myself um, uh, kind of sw swayed by your arguments that it's safer to have the additional spot on the property um, because it creates more safety and it also, um, it, it also enables you to use the property and to um, really fully enjoy the adaptive reuse for which you've been approved. Um, and I think that the, I, I find myself swayed by your argument that you need the additional spot. The location of the additional spot is, um, is logical and that this is where the past and the pres present kind of conflict and it's up to us to resolve it. But uh, that, I don't know, uh, Kay, if, um, have you had many complaints about um, about parking or about any of the changes you've made in the neighborhood? Um, well, we really have not used the facility. I mean, we have not been renting, but so no, there ha I mean, Rudy and I use it as a, uh, you know, I take music lessons there. I have a group music lesson there. So four cars has been the most that has been there, but we have not had more than that because it has not been utilized as but a tourist home. You as see this is vital to kind of uh, the success of your project. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I get. I guess the one other thing that I Rebecca didn't point out, but it was I saw it in her report, is that the, and I understand, the HP board has encourage the BZA to approve this request from their perspective. The Historic Preservation Board. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Kay. Any further questions for the petitioner? I've got, I've just got some remarks here I want to look at. Uh, first off, I do think that people coming up to this structure is, are going to accept that front area off Fairfax Road as a parking area. I mean, they're going to UPS or whomever. So I think having a controlled place that, that looks like a place where vehicles can be is probably somewhat of a, pre a predictable move for what people are going to do anyway. Uh, if, if The other thing I see is that because of the right-of-way location, I think it does set off the road a great a great deal where the where the travel lanes are and i also think on these these adaptive re reuses and these these old structures that people are trying to make something out of in order for them to be access, successful 
I think there's got to be some sort of sort of economic viability towards them. And if we can look at these in a manner that helps that along, I think it just continues the the benefit of being able to maintain these these buildings and keep them keep them relevant and keep them usable. So those are my kind of those are my thoughts, but I am interested to hear from the public if they've got anything else they need to, if there's somebody out there that wants to say something. Okay. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on behalf of this petition? We have the uh, petitioner's representative, Jay Floyd. I'm sorry. Jay Floyd is here to speak. Let's see if. Jay, since you're on the phone, I think you have to press star six to unmute. There you go. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Hi, Jay. Okay. Hello. Can you swear to tell the uh, truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am, I do. Okay, thank you. Continue. Uh, yes, I am the uh, surveyor representative for the fields. Uh, I've prepared these drawings. And just to reiterate what Kay has uh mentioned especially along the fairfax road side there is curb there is a landscape uh, plot as you note on the drawing that is in place it's been there for as long as i can remember and and like bernie was uh, uh, reiterating this has been parking for years and i believe it was part of the original uh, delivery area for the store when it was open the um, bottom, it would be the southwest corner <coughs> of the existing building is the um, access to the basement. And I believe that's where they had their deliveries made at the time. Is that all you wish to say, Jay? What's that? Is, is that all you wish to say? Uh, yes, at this time, unless you have any questions, you know, I'm here more of a technical support. Okay, does anybody have any questions for Mr. Floyd? On behalf of staff, I, I would raise the question is, how does the first car get out if there's a car parked behind it? Well, Larry, if you look, there is, there's plenty of gravel that's already in place. I think there's plenty of room for a, a vehicle to get out. I turn left. <laughs> Larry, hey, Larry, would you repeat your question? Um, my qu my, our, I think our primary concern is uh, unless they pull out onto uh, Fairfax, they have to back out back into the uh, alley to get out. If I'm, unless I'm missing yes, something. That, Larry, that, that is correct. And that is how Mr. Satterley uh, you know, previously there was an entrance to this west side parking lot. I'm sorry, this is Kay. I jumped in. Previously, there was a entrance into this west parking lot from Sanders Second. So you could have done a straight pull through, but Mr. Satterley felt that it was better for public safety to have that uh, southwest drive closed off and we've done that with a little very slight uh, dirt mound and grass to keep people from driving over that so very easily you and I've done this you just swing your back end of your vehicle up into the north driveway um, and pull out obviously forward on to Fairfax Road. Well but my point is wouldn't the car to the south in order to get out, if there was a car parked behind it, both cars would have to be moved. No, sir, I disagree. It would be like parallel parking and pulling out from a parallel parking place and backing up into the back driveway. And Jay or Bernie, someone said that whole area past the property line to the greenscape is already gravel and has been as long as I'm have lived in Bloomington. So there's nothing obstructing that property line. You know, there's gravel between the road 
green space gravel than our property line. So they could but, pull onto the gravel and back. Well, but are you pulling on the gravel in the right of way then? No, sir. Can hey, Rebecca, can you put that picture back up that you had that was looking south down Fairfax Road? Sorry, Rebecca, I took the screen share to put the, the let me stop my share. <coughs> Sorry, right, Kay, which, which photo do you want? There was a photo that you took that you were standing on the north uh, west corner of the property looking south down Fairfax Road. I think, yes, that one. So you see, Larry, the Fairfax, the shoulder, the curb, the green space, then, you know, because we have these shadows of the power lines there, let's say that's the property line. So those two vehicles would be parallel parked along the grass to the left. And if the front one needs to get out, they have plenty of room where these power line shadows are to back around into the, so Rebecca is actually standing when she took this picture on our property on a driveway that goes out into Fairfax Road. And you can see our petition signs when she took this picture our petition signs are stuck in the dirt that we've added at that end. And I have a, um, I have a old sawhorse there to try to prevent people from driving over it because it was a, a traffic pattern change and I didn't have an orange cone. So I used a sawhorse. Well, and Kate, let me, let me clarify something. When we review a site plan, we review it based upon our standards for aisle width for parking lots. Um, and, and for parallel parking, there's a certain aisle width you have to have, in theory. Uh, and the same way is true on your other side of your building. Uh, you, you do not want a situation where somebody has to back out in traffic uh, or has to make multiple maneuvers to get out of a parking space. Uh, yeah, I don't see that that's the case here um, be, because, um, well, first of all, that's always been used for parking, and this is just a consequence of historic adapting a historic property to the modern times. You know, I just feel that it's a logical solution. Well, I, I think it's an absolutely great place for a uh, delivery drop off point. I'm not sure it's a great place for a uh, two for cars to park. Okay. Rebecca, did you uh, want to mention, I don't know if you've already mentioned this and I missed it, sorry, Paul Satterley's comments for this petition. Did you mention that? Sorry, you're on mute or quiet. No, you're not on mute. You're just quiet. I couldn't hear you. Um, I, I didn't mention Paul's comments. Um, I have them up in front of me here. I just hope I have the most recent ones. Um, really what Paul said is parking should not be allowed on roadway right of way, um, which given they were granted the waiver, um, I'm not sure, I don't know. I think he would, you know, not consider that right of way with the waiver granted. I thought that was Second Street that he was speaking of. We had asked Mr. Satterley to speak specific to this variance petition case. So um, that was the response that we received was parking should not be allowed on roadway right of way parking spaces five and six should not be able to access second Sanders Second Avenue. That's what I have. That's Which, what I have to. Okay, so and that and we have already done that by closing off this driveway at the south end. That's right. Okay. Any further questions for the petitioner or the 
petitioner's representative? Bernie? Uh, so looking at this, again, I'm bouncing back and forth between screens. So the drawing that, that Jeff and his firm produced, I can see the landscape, I can see the edge of pavement, I can see the asphalt, uh, but is this gonna be an approved site plan? And if I'm ignorant about what was already approved, forgive me, but I'll ask the question. Is this an approved site or has there been a site plan or waivers approved, the pavement's gonna go in, the landscaping will go in, What what is gonna be beneath the cars? I guess is what I'm asking. Is that a normal site plan approval, uh, Rebecca? Because I do understand staff's recommendation fully. I, I truly do. Yeah. Well, it would it would need to be <clears throat> parking requirements require, would they require concrete for commercial? Or I guess this is tourist home. Well, it'll be paved with something, but I just wanted to make yeah. sure that there's going to be an engineered site plan that shows the parking. It'll be striped. It'll show the the exact location of where things need to fall. All right. This is Tammy. I've been working on the site plan approval. Um, it's going to be gravel here because tourist homes, they got, a, I think there was a paving variance. There have been... <laughs> four or five petitions now with this one. Um, I feel like they got a paving variance. If it's gravel, then there won't be any striping required here. This is Kay. I, I, um, my understanding of the historical component of this, Tammy, and you're, you're the expert here, but was that the historical board was not interested in having the site changed from gravel to pavement. They even at the last meeting even talked about concerns about putting in parking bumpers and um, painting lines for parking. Is that what you recall, Tammy? I'm pulling up a database because my brain can't remember every single thing I uh, run through this, through this property. Yes, there was a fields parking variance approved. Hold on, sorry. I believe, so I cannot answer your question right now. Okay, it's a well, good, the, it's the a good paper, question, Bernie. <laughs> what's that? I said, it's a good question. And we had, um, for tourist homes, typically they're like bridging kind of that commercial to home-based business uh, spectrum, if you will. So we don't sure. typically require pavement, but yeah, your point's well, well taken. The, but there is, you, a site, <laughs> there is a site plan approval process. I mean, we're not looking, I mean, we're not approving anything other than they can proceed on with a site plan. And if they can meet that with, with any waiver that, that we would grant and they could, then they would proceed on, but there's a site plan review, correct? Correct. This basically grants a variance from our development standards for site plan review. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Okay. I don't have anything more, but I, I, are we heard from the public completely? Not yet. Okay. Is there anybody here that wishes to speak on behalf of this petition? Seeing none. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak against this petition? Seeing none, does somebody have a motion ready for us? Mary Beth, may I ask one question of Kay? Sure. Uh, uh, Kay, how would this be monitored on that only two cars would be there? Because we know how people park. And <laughs> it could be, you know, how are you going to make sure there's just two cars that will always be there? Well, the, uh, oh, hold on. Yeah. Um, 
one of the things that we do, we have already prepared for when we begin leasing this is having maps drawn and communicating that to the, the renters that are there. Um, you're right, it is going to have to be a little bit of, uh, you know, the renters are going to have to follow the rules. I do not live close to, I'm on the other side of town from this um, building. So it's not feasible for me to drive by and police it every time it's leased, but I'm hoping that human beings will follow directions. I mean, we, we've communicated when we've showed this for potential uh, users, we talk about parking, we talk about the number of people that are limited, we let them know why both of those things are happening. Um, so I'm open to suggestions on how to police it if it needs to be policed. But communication is is my way, Vicki is trying to. All right, All right. thank you. Mm -hmm. So I, I have one further question if I could. I was under the impression that we were finished with site plan and this was our last step in this process. As you all know, it's been um, a long process for all of us dealing with this project. Is that not true? If we, if this variance passes or not, I still have more steps to go through with getting my final approval. So Kay, you filed for a site plan and we paused review on that site plan pending tonight's variance yes. case for parking spaces five and six. So okay. we don't need any more filings from you. And after site plan approval, we would be proceeding with the last approvals, which would be like the land use certificate. Yeah, and, and Tammy's it, handling that. And does that mean coming back to more BZA meetings or? No. This no, will be only, only if you want a variance from one of our requirements at the conclusion of site plan. I mean, we have not finished the review of the site plan. Okay, right. we approve a site plan subject upon meeting our development standards. If at that point in time you find something you do not want to meet, then that might necessitate another visit to the BZA. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Thank you. Okay, are we ready to make a motion? Yeah, Margaret, you're on mute. Yeah. Okay. I, I'd like to, you know, I've been involved with historical properties and his, historical preservation and development, and it's very difficult, you know, but in this case, I see that uh, there are practical difficulties and also um, that there are parking spaces one, two, three, and four, and spaces five and six would be kind of overflow, so to speak. And so for the that reason, I'd like to make a motion that in case number 2101-VAR-03, the fields parking variance, that uh, we help uh, the fields uh, resolve the conflict between the past and the present and approve their uh, design variance for two additional, par or actually one additional parking space um, uh, that would enable them to kind of enjoy the full use of their property and to uh, remediate kind of the practical difficulties that exist just by the nature of the historic uh, structure. So um, I, I'd, li I'd like to move that we approve this. The standards variance uh, to the parking lot setback as well, to the parking lot access aisle width standard in chapter 806 and uh, I'd like to move that we approve the design standards variance to the parking lot setback standards in chapter 806 because of practical difficulties and this will enable, will solve this conflict between the past and the present in the use of this uh, historic property. I'll second. Okay. Okay. I'll call the roll. The vote is on petition number uh, 2101 VAR-03 Fields Parking Standards Variance uh, from Chapter uh, 806 uh, in regard to uh, step back from right of way and parking lot, lot access aisle width. Uh, those approved both variances. Uh, 
Uh, and, uh, we, and a vote in favor is vote to approve both variances with an amended finding of practical difficulties in regard to utilization of the property. Uh, Bernie Gertas? Yes. Mary Beth Kismarczyk? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? No. Okay, the uh, variance is approved by a three to one margin. All right, thank you, and you have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next up, we have case number 2012-VAR-04. Rebecca? Hi. Um, so this is a request for one design standard variance from the buildable area requirement of chapter 804. And specifically in this instance, we are looking at uh, the regulation around 15% slope. Um, the petitioners are requesting this, so this variance, so that they can, can construct a 40 foot by 60 foot uh, detached garage in an area that exceeds the 15% slope. Um, and for some background here, the, the, the lot is currently vacant. Um, petitioners are planning to build a new residence and that new residence qualifies for the administrative waiver um, of 15% slope provision, but the garage or uh, does not. And so it's th this garage that is requiring the buildable area variance. Um, and additionally, um, in this area, in this, uh, their, their um, rule, their <laughs> covenants require that uh, recreation equipment be stored in permanent structures. And the Petitioners have um, some rec equipment that they will need to store. Uh, so they are trying to, to do this to honor the covenants um, of the neighborhood. So the property is located at 2305 South Sunday Drive. Um, that's Clear Creek Township. And it is zoned uh, Agricultural Rural Reserve. The comp plan designates the, the petition site as rural residential. Um, and on the right, you see site conditions. Um, none other than the slope really uh, impact their plans to build. Here is an image of the slope. You can see that the majority of the parcel uh, is impacted by slopes. Uh, the, the, the box in green, not to scale, but it's um, approximately where they intend to build the uh, detached garage. So as you can see, portions of it are in uh, sloped areas. Um, site photos here, um, I just was trying to give you all a sense of um, the garage location on the lot and the degree of slope. Um, this is looking, let's see, this would be looking west, I think. Uh, this is looking north, northerly. Um, so that you, again, very good illustration of how sloped the lots are, the lot is. Here we have the petitioner's letter to the board and their site uh, plan that they provided us. Um, here's the garage that's uh, violating the slope. Um, here's their propo the proposed house. And of course their septic is to the north. So staff recommends approval of the design standards variance from the buildable area requirement of chapter 804 uh, based on findings of fact and subject to the Monroe County Highway and Drainage Engineer reports. Are there Anyone any have any questions for Rebecca? Bernie does. 
You want to unmute yourself, Bernie? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Rebecca, okay. the placement of that, of the attached garage or the detached garage, the detached garage, uh, they've got that up as far as close to the roadway and as far away from any, any slopes. It looks to me as possible. Is that correct? Yes. It looks like they tried to place this in an area that was best fit for the property. Yes. As far as putting it on there. Okay. That, that's the only, that's the only question I had. And also logical to, you know, park their recreational equipment in. Mm -hmm. logical was that a suggestion? That, was that a suggestion that staff made to them, or was that something that they just curious that they came in with themselves? Um, I'm. I don't know for sure. Um, I. It's not a recommendation I made to them. Okay. So. Any further questions for staff? Seeing none, is the petitioner here? Would they like to speak? I am here, but nothing more to share unless there's questions. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Thank you. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on behalf of this petition? Seeing none, is there anyone here who would like to speak against this petition? Seeing none. I'd just like to make a comment. You know, looking at those photos and that beautiful landscape, it just makes you fall in love with Indiana all over again. That's a beautiful piece of land. It is indeed. Yeah. And I'll make an observation. It is a beautiful piece of land. And with those slopes, look how well maintained and how secure the slopes are. There's no erosion. It's, it's just beautifully maintained. And even on those slopes, the soil's not washing away and it, it shows what can be done on slopes that are what, what people may perceive as steep. I need so some that's, help with that. <laughs> that's beautiful only... though. So I'd like right. to make a move then, a motion okay. that we approve the design standard variance from the buildable area requirement of chapter 804 in regard as regards to case number 2012 dash VAR dash zero four. And this should be based on the findings of fact and subject to the Monroe County Highway and Drainage Engineer reports. I'll second the motion. I hey, call the roll, Larry. Yeah, it's been uh, moved and second to approve the variance uh, for 2101-ER-04 Miller Billable Area Variance for the property located uh, in Clerk Lake Township at 2305 South Sunday Drive. A vote in favor is a vote to grant the variance for 15% slope uh, for construction of the accessory dwelling structure. Uh, the variance is from Chapter 804 of the Monroe County Zoning Ordinance, and the, the variance is granted based upon the findings of fact and subject to the Monroe County Highway and Drainage Engineers reports. Again, a vote in favor is both to approve the variance, and we'll go back to Mayor Bisk Smartcheck. Yes. Barbara Clements. Yes. Vicki Sorensen. Yes. Bernie Garitas. Yes. Uh, the variance is approved by a 4 to 0 vote. All right, thank you, and you have a wonderful evening. Thank you all. All right, what do we got up next? I lost my agenda. The, that was the last case because Any the, reports? it was continued. Uh, I have no reports. I don't believe Dave's online. Or is, yeah, there he is. I've had two days. No report. Okay, anything else? Excellent job again, staff. Truly, you guys do a great job. Excellent, indeed, yes. Thank you all. Excited to see you in person sometime soon. <laughs> oh my gosh, is that a promise that we're going to be able to meet in person? I'm no. done with this Zoom stuff, I'm telling you. I really am. <laughs> well, but now I get a new computer, I can have a new, these interesting backgrounds and stuff. We'll put a sign up behind you, Mary Beth. <laughs> all right, thank you all. Okay. Thanks, everybody. All right, uh, when I should adjourn the meeting or? I move that we adjourn. I second. That commission? Aye. Yes. Aye. Thank Aye. you. Thank you. Have a good evening. It was long and proud. Sounds like acclimation to me. <laughs> <laughs>